We are excited to cook with you today. Do you want your vest on? Okay, how's everybody doing? Do we have people on? Yeah, that went pretty smooth for our first time. Nice. This is our first time ever. With our little oh, cooking. Yeah. Our first time ever doing like this live cooking thing. So we should tell them what we're making. Okay, so today we are making a coconut. It's actually a coconut lemon freezer fudge, but you can go on to Apricot Lane Farms and the coconut lime freezer fudge is on there. And it's the same thing except I'm switching out lemon. And yeah, you can have one. He wants a cashew. <laughs> but um, so I've, I've actually not had it with lemon before, but I think you can probably put whatever citrus you want to in there because um, it's gonna taste good. It's like super simple. So this is not an overly complicated recipe. I think the link is in the bio too. Okay, good. So for later, they can, they can check the link in bio. Okay, link in bio. But I wanted to start with something else first. So um, what I've been doing lately with all this coronavirus is thinking herbs are obviously amazing for all sorts of different healing properties. So I learned of plantain. I've known about this since the beginning of the farm because we had this woman Maria worked with us and she was from Hungary and she knew tons about herbs and I learned so much from her and she always used to talk about plantain which is this and it's called ribwort plantain and so whenever all this was going on with corona I remembered that there was something about respiratory with this so I looked it up and it indeed is good for respiratory there's also thyme and oregano is always good for um, different types of um, uh, illnesses. And so I went out in the field and I had my phone because there's this app called Picture This and you can literally put it on, like you just put it like this on there and it tells you whether it's rib or plantain. So I identified it in the field and then brought it back in here and made a tea out of it. So I'm gonna start us. Here, I'll show you, I'll, this is how the app works. Oh. It's really cool, like I have a video. Yeah, it's, so that's us just taking a photo of a flower. And then I would say 90% of the time it gets it right. It's really cool. And we're not getting, we're not sponsored by these guys. No. <laughs> yeah, there's, this is not an ad. This this is not, is yeah, this is just like a cheater that we've been able to identify a lot of really cool um, so uh, plants with that. out there. So um, yeah. I don't have everything totally set like a cooking show, so we're gonna kind of wing it together. So it's called picture this, anyway, yeah. Yeah, picture yeah. this. All right. So I was literally in the field identifying that and then bringing it back in here and feeling incredibly proud of myself that I did that. And then I actually dried it. So um, I'm starting to create like an herb area in the pantry because I was very, very inspired. There's a woman that doing a Instagram called Slow Down Farmstead. And um, I just, she did something on her pantry for tea and I was super inspired and thinking, why am I not doing that here on the farm? So I picked more of this and then dried it out in the dehydrator. And so now I have it it's just whenever I need it. And just regular old plantain. Just plantain. Yeah. And it's all over the place. Yeah. So you guys can get it in your yards. Too. Yeah, you it's would like consider it, 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 it. You would consider it a weed in your yard, but it's 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 not a weed. It, it serves. It has it has a purpose. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't even know how much. I know <clears throat> whenever you have dried that you do like a teaspoon, but I'm just gonna basically put some of this in there. You wouldn't even really have to chop it up. And um. We'll just throw so you don't have in. to dry it? You, you really no, don't? you can do it from fresh too. The first time I made it with thyme and oregano, I just did fresh. Your and so. That's a really good idea. What did you say? If if you dry the first time, you might want to do it wrong if you want to. So then, so then you see what happens if you don't do the right thing. Oh, right. So you can learn from by making mistakes. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. That's how mom and dad learned how to farm for eight years. <laughs> and eight, what did you tell me the yeah. other day you learned at school about mistakes? Mistakes? Uh, make friends. Mistakes make friends. And we're out of school right now, too. So we don't have that beautiful school. Usually he goes to school um, up on the hill. 
We have a little homeschool, but it's out right now. So we've been learning together a lot. Okay, so awesome. sorry, I, I interrupted your... Okay, so that's it. I just put some water in there, and I'm just going to set this aside, and we can let it steep for like 10 minutes. And then um, I always, whenever I make teas, I like to just put them in these Pyrex cups because I think it's the easiest. And then I pour it through this. So if I'm using a loose, loose leaf tea, it's the easiest. Just you pour it right in there, and then pour that over top of your... Your cup, so we'll, we'll do that in a But when you do those, you kind of real spill all over the place. Yes, that's true. If you did that. I think you'll do the sink, right? I mean, over a bowl because you need all that stuff. So this is our compost, so I'm just going to put the rest of this in compost. But I could also dry it out for my stash over there. But we put everything on the farming, everything from that we eat back in compost, and it goes back onto the farm. So um, that's a very part of this important part of the cycle. We even, all of our team that lives on the farm also does that as well. But you can put anything in there. Okay, so let's make some coconut. Let's remind us what we're making again, yeah. Okay, we're making coconut lemon freezer fudge. I honestly didn't even have time to totally review the recipe, so we're gonna kind of wing it together. So if this is not exactly like it is online, you can do it either way, because it's the most forgiving recipe ever. So um, I did, my printer wouldn't work either. So I, I wrote down what it First is. time. Yes. Oh, so, and uh, tell them what we need, like all the ingredients. First we need coconut oil. You want to hold up coconut I oil? That's right here. Yep, coconut you're right. Oil. And this is our coconut oil. So this is just purchased. And you want to do a virgin. Can I do it? Yeah, you'll be able to scoop some. So we're going to use a virgin coconut oil because you want to be using um, like a first press of oils and an unrefined oil, and that's really important part. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I picked this recipe today is because the experts who know more than me say that coconut oil is an antiviral. And so given the fact that we're all in lockdown right now because of a virus, <laughs> I figured that's a good thing. And I have used this recipe for um, helping Bodhi because when he dealt with a little bit of eczema on his arm, he had a little eczema patch, um, I just had forgotten what I know. You know how that happens? And I had a um, friend come over for a play date or something and she said, oh, I see Bodhi has some eczema. You told me about fats. Are you giving him extra fats? And I was like, no. <laughs> so um, I thought of this fudge which is so easy to make. You stick it in the fridge, and then, um, oh, he's trying to show how his eggs oh, Well, I just see it. Oh, you, okay. So, no, it's great. And uh, so then you stick it in the fridge, and he can have it then for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, and he loves it because he gets to have like a dessert for breakfast, and I love it because I know he's eating coconut oil, which has got lots of really good fats in it. So, um, I think it has something called lauric acid, which is in uh, breast milk, I guess. So we're gonna make this. Here, come on down, bud, we gotta do this. So the ingredients are coconut oil, which is that, cashew butter, but you can also, if you just have cashews, just put it in your, um, your Vitamix for a while, or your, not Vitamix, sorry, your food processor if you have it, or if you have a good high-speed blender like Vitamix, you can, Stick it in there for a while to make cashew butter. Then honey, you wanna hold up the honey? And this is honey from the farm. So these are our bees hard work in this. And I learned something incredible and I'm gonna get it wrong because um, I just thought of it. And pretty much things that go in my brain go right back out. And so I have to, that's just, that's just part of me. So I have to re-remember every time I try to say something because I run on instinct. Like a goldfish. Yeah, kind of like a goldfish. I follow the instinct and then I forget what the heck. <laughs> but, um, like Blue, our dog. Yeah, kind of yeah. like that. So, but anyways, the honey, I think it's something like an eighth of a teaspoon that a bee makes an eighth of a teaspoon in its lifetime of honey. So it gives such appreciation for what that bee is doing. And whenever you have like an entire vat of honey like this, of how many bees. And you're like, what? $25 <laughs> for that? <laughs> and the bee's like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> okay. And so then we have shredded coconut, which I just got this on Thrive, which I love. Thrive is so good, especially right now. It's helpful. 
Um, and then we're gonna have lemons. So I picked these. Oh, do you have a lemon picking? Don't you? Oh, I have some lemon. Yeah. We, we took footage from lemon picking yesterday. On our daily walks, because right now that's what we do. We walk a lot. Those are our evening activities. Um, I, no, most of them are for our dog named Blue. Yes. Okay, so we have lemon and then vanilla and sea salt and then some nuts. So whenever I make this at home, I'm always kind of in a hurry and I don't roast the nuts and I don't toast the coconut oil. Our kitchen team had redone this recipe a little while ago, so they made it extra special with the lime and the, the roasting and stuff like that, and it is awesome. So you can do that if you want to, and I'll try to do it now, but most likely I'm gonna forget that we're doing this and I'm gonna burn it, and then we'll just use the stuff that's not toasted. <laughs> so um, I think it's like about a tablespoon for the garnish portion. So this is cast iron skillet. We live and breathe by our cast iron skillets. We love them. So that's all you see up here, and honestly, I never pull anything else out. That's all we ever use. Keys to cast iron skillets are that you do have to season them to start, and so you can look up. Um, Why I think, do we never use a timer? A timer? Well, we probably should, but. Use one. <laughs> that you're smart to think of that, because Bodhi's like, how can I, mom, who's always kind of forgetting things like that, how can I help her right now? But, <laughs> um, and he's my little sage. Um, so there's that. And then we're going to put, I think it's like a half cup. I don't know. We're just going to put some right there. So we're going to try to toast both of these and not burn them. Of cashews. Yeah, of cashews and then of coconut. Um, so how much coconut, how much cashew? So I think it's about a, let me see what I got on here. It's the garnish portion on the website, but I think it's like a tablespoon of coconut and then um, maybe all the cashews, which, oh, a half cup is the, the, um, garnish portion of that. So you're just toasting for the garnish. So those will go. The key with cashews, this is actually every single nut. And this is both better for culinary and better for your digestion, is soaking nuts. So they've done this in all traditional cultures forever. And our culture right now is just starting to re-remember that we've always done this. Because nuts have um, different properties that make them difficult to digest. And you can go into that, it's like phytic acid and enzyme inhibitors, but the process of soaking nuts in salt water then helps to neutralize those things that can chelate other, chelate, so it's like bind to other minerals and carry them out of your body. And it can also make your own enzymes not work so well to digest. So all you really have to remember is that soaking helps. And the way you soak, is you take nuts and you put them in a bowl of like salty water, salty like the sea. So just you taste it and you're like, oh, I feel like I'm in the ocean and you're in good shape there. And then you let it sit overnight or for cashews, you can only do six hours because they get really slimy and then you've ruined your whole thing and cashews are expensive. So we don't want to go there. Is there anything on the blog about um, soaking that you've I done? I think that I do have it on the blog I, and where's I the think, blog? Is so it at apricotlanefarms.com? So Apricot Lane Farms is where a dot, lot of it Apricot is. Apricotlanefarms.com. Apricotlanefarms.com. And they might be able to find that on the blog. I think it's there. I wrote an old blog called Organic Spark. I know it's on there if I haven't moved it over to Apricot Lane Farms yet. Um, Bodie's, this is our signal. He's holding me, which means he no, wants to say. Oh, you don't need to say something? Okay, cool. Okay. So um, anyways, you wanna make it salty like the sea, let them soak either overnight or for cashews six hours, put them in a colander, strain it, and wash it off real good, and then stick them either in your oven at your lowest temperature, like 160 on a sheet tray, or you wanna do it on a dehydrator tray, put a little sea salt on there so it tastes good. Ooh, we're starting to, I can smell it. See, there we go, toasted, and that's fine. We're gonna be done with that. Okay, and then this one's gonna go. So as soon as, everything I do pretty much is by smell. So as soon as I start to smell it, then I know I'm there. And it works most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like when we burn things, we know yeah. that we've gone too far, it works right? Most of the time. Yeah. yeah. So um, then, uh, oh, then you're putting in the dehydrator. In the dehydrator or the oven, it's gonna take you like a full day to get that fully dried out. But the key to that is, 
you don't get that nut gut when you eat too many, like you forget a snack for the plane, you go get a bag of almonds, you eat the entire bag, and then the way you feel, that we call nut gut. <laughs> and that, it will make it so that doesn't happen as much. You still can't like go crazy because you gotta figure nuts are in like a ironclad container by nature. So they are actually wanting you to eat an entire bag of them. You just have a few of them. But then also they, um, they, so they help your digestion, but they taste better. So if you do this with walnuts, you will not believe how good. Yeah, they, they kind of have like a pop, like they almost like when you bite into them, they like pop a little bit. Yes. There's like a, a little bit more of a crispness to them. And they definitely, I feel like you definitely, the flavor changes completely. Yes, I yeah. think so too. Yeah. Okay, so we still got a lot to do. So let's do, um, we're gonna take coconut oil. Bodhi, this will be your job. Okay. Yes. You're welcome. So you're Where do you get your cashews from? So I actually, um, the only nuts we grow are macadamia. And macadamia nuts, come to find out, take like eight or nine years to start producing macadamia nuts. So we have produced them this year in small quantities, but um, all my other nuts, I just get on nuts.com. They're, it's, they have sell organic nuts and they're great. And then can you still make um, peanut butter oh, with, so can you still make peanut butter with soaked nuts Pe if you dry oh, them yeah. after? That's what you wanna do, you wanna, um, so that's why this right here, this is actually not. So that was a question from Mike. Yeah, yeah. thanks Mike. So this is um, not your best bet because these aren't so cashews, but in small, small amount, it is what it is. It's the recipe hard. for this is posted in our bio. The link is yeah, in the bio. Keep going and and some of our team is actually answering some of your questions under their own names um, in this thread. So you'll see links that um, Sandra and or Hannah are putting up. Um, throughout this as well. Okay. All right. So, so are we are we so through all the ingredients? So this would not be soaked. In an ideal world, I'd be actually making the cashew butter from this, but you know it is what it is, and it's fine. And then, um, but anytime we're eating nuts, it's going to be that. And I make most of my almond butter because we'll this eat that really more often. This is really hard, mom. Oh, I'm going to help you. Whatever you get in there. Is so good. if cashews hurt someone's stomach, can they sub for this? To sub out yeah, something you else? Can, I actually, I think when I did it on Organic Spark, I did it with almond butter, but you can use really any nut butter. You can do a little less um, honey if you want it to be even less. I actually think I am going to cut it because this calls for two tablespoons, which is awesome if your family is like used to sweet stuff. Go ahead and do that. If your family is not, like we're pretty used to not that sweet. And so I'll do a tablespoon and he'll think it's great. That'll be enough for him. Okay. So, um, just remind people what we're making again, because some people are joining. Just so now. we are making coconut lemon freezer fudge. Bodhi's got the coconut oil going, and I'm gonna start pulling. I'm gonna pull the um, Cuisinart over here. How much coconut oil do we want? Are we so there you yet? Want a uh, cup? Ooh, what am I forgotten about? There we go. We're still all right. Yeah, we used the old nose. We heard. We we smelled smoke. <laughs> and I hope the fire alarm. And yes. we hope the fire alarm doesn't go off. <laughs> On. Okay, so this is a new Cuisinart. I always put it on funky, but I think I got it. So, um, you ready for some help? No, I, I Okay, don't. keep going. Uh, so, Sandra Keats just posted the recipe again. It's SM Keats. That link is the recipe. SM Keats. Sandra's our producer. SM Keats is posting the recipe. If you look in the... The message thread there you'll see you can you can link to it so i'm gonna start doing the cashew butter is a half cup and like i said this is so forgiving all the time i don't have any measuring cups and stuff with me i just like pour it in until it looks about right but um but i do i am a person that likes to work off of a recipe loosely because I don't like winging it and failing it, failing. I like winging it and being close enough that it works. So I'll, like, I would pull this up on my phone, figure out what it is, and then I'd just approximate, and that's fine. I would summarize the totality of what you just said to be like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I could really interpret everything you just said to be like, whatever. Whatever. Right? Whatever. 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 <laughs> oh, we were talking about cast iron skillets. Should I still do it? Um, sure, but keep, try to okay. stay somewhat focused. I'm losing well, track. I'll be somewhat focused. So cast iron skillets are awesome. You can season them and you can find that, I think, just you can Google it and figure out how to season. I use bacon fat when I'm going to season it. But nowadays, none of these have to be seasoned because they've been worked with so much. But the key to cast iron skillets, there's two of them. 
is when you clean it, you uh, get one of these. It's like on Amazon. It's a cast iron skillet. They used to be thing. used uh, as knight's clothing to prevent. <laughs> so there's a lot of this on the market now. So Ever since Game of Thrones went off the air. <laughs> so if this is filled with food, you don't use soap. You put it under the water. You use this scrubber like this and it comes right off and then you leave the oils in there whenever you're gonna dry. And I usually just set it right back over there. And then you wash this out with soap. Yeah, so. you just like put a bunch of soap on that and it gets all sudsy. Yep. So that's a key. Another I like it because is... for me, it's like you don't really do the dishes. <laughs> I like, so to me, I always feel like I'm kind of getting away with something. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm like, I'm always willing to do the cast iron skillets because I'm like, ah, something like sort of has to be done. Yes. Yeah. So um, the other key to the cast iron skillet is you can put a, if you really stuck your eggs in there, you can put a little bit of water and turn it on high and let it boil just for a second and then scrape with your spatula and it comes right up. And then you can use that thing if you want to, to finish it off. Okay. So all you basically do with this, um, ooh, we're getting some brown. I'm actually going to quit while I'm ahead. I think we got some brown on there and we're good to go. Do we need more? No. I'm There's just... some on there. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, we're just going to start putting stuff in here. So, this is the half cup of um, cashew butter or any kind of nut butter really is going to be just Mom? fine. Yes. You said you are. You said you're now forget that. I don't think you are anymore. Thanks, buddy. Because uh, you checked two times and you and nothing happened. I know. I got it, and it's done now. We don't even have to worry about it anymore. Oh. Okay. So um, that's done. Now we're gonna do some some of our honey. Both of them. Yeah, they're both done. So um, honey, we're wanting to do like I said on the recipe. My shoes untied. On the recipe. Hold on, we can just see that. Is it really untied? These are the greatest shoes, too. If you do, if We're you are... We're not sponsored by any of these things that she's saying are great. But they are great. <laughs> they're like the barefoot type shoes, and they aren't... You gotta wear the muck boots when you're really out on the farm, but if you're just kind of doing light stuff, they're perfect. So, um... We're gonna do a well, tablespoon seems, for our family. Like, yes, Missy, well, you can use uh, peanut butter. You can sub this out, right, Molly? Yeah, that's what you want to do. But the spoon I can't do because there's holes. But, but oh, look. Here, watch. We're going to push down, and now um, you got more room. So that's the coconut. There you go. So, um, yeah, Missy can use any kind of nut butter that she wants. And her kids will probably love coconut. And then you could go crazy. You could, like, do coconut and then... Um, or you could do peanut butter and then serve it with frozen grapes alongside, and then it would feel like peanut butter and jelly, and the frozen grapes kids love too, and then you're getting good uh, fats in them and a little snack. Okay. Mom, it's really hard to get it off. Okay, I'm done. With you. Done, I'll finish it up. Okay, so we got a um, tablespoon of our bee's amazing honey in there. Now we're gonna fit it with Bodhi. Look at what Bodhi did. And this was actually a ton of work. So we that would be, we would say that's probably like um, 70 bees worth of lifetime <laughs> right there. So, um, and then coconut what are we doing oil. Um, so Bodhi's been doing this, right? He's been yes, prepping he this stuff. Yes, he did almost all of it. So for those of you who may not have worked with coconut oil before, it is solid whenever it's like 70 something and lower temperature. So right now we know it's kind of cool in our house because it's solid. I always know when we're getting into summertime, although um, every farmhouse on the farm has always runs a little cool inside. Um, but then as it starts to get warm outside, then it's liquid whenever I look over and see it by my stove and I'm like, ah, oh, it's summertime. Um, okay, cup of coconut oil. So that's a lot of coconut oil. That is like the majority that's in this recipe is just coconut oil. And that's why it's so great for kids because they're getting those good fats in them without really even um, a struggle at all. So, and it really did for Bodhi's eczema, whenever I started him, I, I made this and then he started eating this like whenever he wanted to, breakfast, dinner, whatever, then it started reducing. And then I had to go to other steps we added in a cod liver oil. I we added even in. Even a... see it anymore. Yep. We added in a probiotic, um, and then 
I worked with a company called Biodynamic Wellness, who are really awesome down in San Diego. It's all Skype. I think they take clients, but I do it by so, Skype. So Jamie's asking if they can use a blender if they don't have a food processor. Yeah, that would be fine. So you can use a blender. Yeah, yeah. that would be fine. So um, what else do we got here? So cat coconut. She says, uh, and te let's see, teams and something. So it's asking if I'm making my own cashew butter, do I add in water or a bit of oil to moisten? No, cashews should not need that. Sometimes whenever I do almond butter, I'll add a little actually coconut oil to it, or you can add another kind of oil, just like a little bit of it, just to get it going, um, which is easier. And you can let it go enough in a food processor that it's going to work even without that, but it's better for almonds to add a little bit. Um, probably not for pecans and walnuts. You probably don't need it because they're soft enough and oily enough. But, um, and cashews are soft enough, so you probably don't need that. Um, hope that helps. Yeah, that helps. Okay. And yes, uh, everyone is still working on the farm. Um, all of our ag team is, is still here because, you know, we're considered, um, I guess, an essential, right? One of the uh, essential industries because we're supplying food to people in grocery stores. So yeah, thanks for asking and they're out there and honestly at, at great risk to their own safety because they're having to work, you know, with each other. We're just trying as, much, as best we can to do some social distancing and taking lots of other sanitation um, uh, steps and methods. Uh, and some of our support team is able to work from home, so they do. Yeah, some limit. support team, yeah, but yep. mainly a lot of people are still here. Yeah. Okay, so we got a tablespoon-ish of, um, there's a great book of, of oh, sorry, coconut, shredded coconut, this I just got off Sometimes I have to, she, she won't finish the sentence, and sometimes <laughs> I have to be like, you have to finish the sentence. <laughs> um, and there's a great children's book called Ish, that Bodhi and I were just talking about this morning, that, oh, what the heck? Oh, okay. Oh, what was that? That was a little piece of the plastic from the bag. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> got that out of there. Okay, we got coconut, Flakes, coconut oil, cashew butter. Now we're you gonna have to put that in the sink. You're right. It needs to go in the trash. Do you want to fix that for me? Um, and then now we're gonna zest our lemon zester. These things are the best microplane, or the microplanes are the best zesters for that. Not sponsored. Just telling you what I like. Um, then lemon. Which we showed you me picking it on our I time see, with Blue last see night. Some bra brown tap, br brown. Uh, um. Uh, what were they? Brown. brown. Uh. Which one? Napkins in both. Oh, we need to put them over there. So Bodie's being a good. Um, I'm gonna show steward. the footage of you guys out picking again, just so they can okay. see we got these are the lemons we got last night. So that's all we need. And then a little bit of lemon juice. So let's, um, let's do this part. Bodhi might be able to help with this. So, um. There's a, uh, Corey, one of the guardian dogs. Out so I just cut the lemon, the one that I just zested. You always want to zest first, just cause it's easier. And then we're going to, this cute bowl, isn't this adorable? This was from Baltimore Clayworks, which we love. Just that use it anyways. <laughs> Okay, so um, here, Bode, can you push down this like mm. that and squeeze? Uh, don't do that. Don't do that. Oh. I don't want to do it. Okay, it's a oh. little hard, but then you squirt the juice into there. Okay. There you go. Uh, oh. And I'll push with you. No, no, I know. I You got it? Oh, my gosh. That's my strong kid. <sighs> Good job, buddy. That's, that's good, and you're close to all we need. We need a teaspoon, so you're almost there. Give it a little bit more. Oh, a little bit more. Just one more. Uh, just give it one more good squeeze. Let me see. Nice! How about that for developing those hand skills? Better than scissors. Just have them juice a lemon. Um, okay, here, I'll do this slight more. There you go. Okay. I'm going to do it all by myself. Oh, sorry. Okay, so we got... One, do you want to put the, some of this well, in there? I, I thought I actually want some lemon. Some lemon? Okay. Let's do uh, the question about the plantain, did we use ribwort or broadleaf? Ribwort is what we yeah. used. Yeah. You might be able to use both. You just look it up yeah. on Google. It's the, yeah, that's yours. Okay. Okay, so I'm putting a little bit of this in there. 
a little bit of what? Uh, lemon zest into mm -hmm. there. When I make this at home, I often only do coconut oil, whatever kind of nut butter I'm using, honey, a little bit of vanilla, and a little bit of sea salt. And all the other extra fancies are in there because the culinary team is amazing and they made it from good to great. So you could scale it down even easier if you want to at home. Remind people what we're making right now. So and, we are making coconut. And is, is what, ba what Bodhi's doing in the background, is that sanitary? Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, we're, this is us. We're sharing germs in this house. So it is totally are you fun. eating a lemon? All right, so what are we making? Okay, we're making coconut lemon freezer fudge. So now you just want like a tablespoon, so I'm just gonna kind of wing it um, into your, this is just lemon, just to give it a little nice flavor. Lemon juice. Our, yep, lemon juice. And that is what ties us into the farm, because some of this other stuff isn't from the farm, but a little bit of our citrus, because we're in winter. That's our time for citrus. Wait, just when the bodies need vitamin C. Yeah, some of this other stuff's not. Oh, and we need some vanilla. So I'm just gonna do, it's a teaspoon, so I'm just gonna do a little dash of it. Like, is that? That's not right. That's not. And that's not. That's not. You wanna give me a pinch, buddy? Uh, and that bowl is not. No. Nope. Pinch. And, and here, a pinch of sea salt. In where? Into here. I'm gonna pull it over. There you go, bud. Do one more little pinch. That was a mini pinch. You got it. Oh, oh, that's maybe too much. Yeah, too much. There. Just a little, another little one. Go for it. There. You got it. Okay. There we go. I think we got it all. Coconut oil, cashew butter, honey, shredded coconut, lime juice, lime zest, vanilla, sea salt. We're gonna whiz this up. Oh, geez. I told you I just got this thing and I don't... Oh, man. <laughs> I swear I even practiced this part because I know that I don't... <laughs> Oh. You had it on backwards. Okay. <laughs> there you go. So you're whizzing it up. You want to press it this time? Um, sure. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Um, yep. Off. Oh. press that one. There you go. So. There we are. That's our coconut lime, lemon freezer fudge. So I got out a container, I thought. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So the link is in the bio for the recipe. Oh, Molly's um, looking Molly, for something. I forgot to get the, I thought I got a container, but I didn't. Okay, here we go. So, now you can put parchment in the bottom of this. It makes it easier to come out. Sorry. And I'm not going to do that. because That's that Bodie's still work. eating a lemon, which isn't probably good for the enamel of your teeth, but if we can do it every once in a while, right? Yeah, yeah no problem. No, no problem. It's fine. Yeah, every once in a while. Yeah. That's... Anytime. Uh, well, anytime we have them. Yes. Or have them on the farm. Yes. I missed what... I interrupted what you were saying. Sorry. No, I don't care. Oh, the, oh there's... So, if you want to... Um, to really make it easy to come out, and if you've got the time, you can put line it with some parchment paper, which is really nice. It line pops. what? The line food. this pan with some parchment paper. So we like to use this kind because then we can compost it. So um, you can line it in there and then pour it in. I'm just gonna pour it right in because it feels like slightly boring to have you watch me cut parchment paper, right? And you won't have to deal with the fact that it's stuck in there later. Okay. That's what stuck in where? So that this fudge will stick in there a little bit, but it, it doesn't actually stick that much. Okay, so this is a slightly bigger size um, pan than what uh, we put online, but you don't have to worry about it because um, you can kind of use whatever size pan you want. If it's thinner, um, that's fine. If it's thicker, that's fine too. And you might find that you like a certain size, so you can just keep using that one. So, is this thicker? There, oops. Um, okay. That's fine. You want to try it? Um, okay. Hello, New Zealand. Hello, Seattle, Montana, Maryland, Baltimore. Nice. We'll clear this out so we can. Ugh. All right. Iran. Iran. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to just spread this out a little bit. And then we're going to put the, um, the beautiful... 
toasted things on top? You want to lift that? Uh, no. Okay. So we've got... That was too much. Too much. That I'm makes sorry sense. Sorry I interrupted you. No, no worries. Okay. Okay. So we, then you can put as much or as little of the toasted coconut as you want on top. And you can even put a little bit of your extra zest that you might have on top. I'll do that. That's a little harder because it's kind of like um, chunky and you don't really want to eat big chunks of zest. So just do it like a little bit of it, but it's pretty to see up there. And your kids may not like that. So you can, if, if the zest is a challenge because kid it's too strong for the kids, just leave it off. Okay, now we got our nuts. So Mom, you could like cut these zest. or just smush them. Do I like zest? You like zest, yeah. Yeah, because you're licking a lemon right now, so you're good with the strong taste of lemon. <laughs> um, okay. Hello, Netherlands. Welcome. So, there we go. See, cashews are so soft. Nova Scotia. All right. So see how nicely toasted? I'm proud of myself. This is not the norm. Okay, and then we're going to put that on top there. And that... My friends, is coconut lime freezer fudge, lemon freezer fudge, <laughs> or lime on lime. So I'm gonna pop this in the freezer. Hopefully you won't see the inside of my refrigerator because there's a lot of cooking at home right now, so it's a mess, but um, we cleaned up oh, the kitchen. Oh no, I think. And ah, the culinary I'm team, the beautiful team that is supporting um, all of our farmers right now, made this for me yesterday. What is this? Uh, this is piece? the magical, f magically finished product. May I have yes. a piece? Um, yes. Thanks. Maddie, thanks for watching the documentary in your biology class. That's great. Hello, Seattle. Again, a lot of people from Seattle today. Oh, Why? Nice. Wow, what? Well, how many? Um, okay, I should have left this out for just a minute before I started. But it's, well, it's coming. The first piece never comes out pretty, but then you're good to go. And we're going to take questions too. So if you have some questions, feel free to start texting or sorry, messaging them in. And then um, I'll, I'll uh, uh, you let Molly know what you're, what you're uh, curious about. Okay. And it doesn't have to be just about the um, recipe from today. It could be anything um, about um, the, the Molly's perspective on uh, cooking and the farm, et cetera. Oh. <laughs> what did he say? Because I said the first one doesn't always come out pretty. And he goes, hey, mom, you can have the first one. <laughs> so. Hello, Simi Valley. You All are right. neighbors, yes. Victoria, British Columbia. So we got our uh, Yeah, uh, we're going to do a live stream with Emma. Friday's on the farm at 10 o'clock. Friday's on the farm at 10 o'clock for kids. Uh, the kid and you is welcome to join. We do little deep dives. That'll be Friday, 10 o'clock Pacific time with Emma. And it's going to be all about pigs. Oh, look, they lined theirs with parchment, see? Who made it so and it easy? it comes up so easy. Look, even the first one came up pretty. Who made this at, up at the... This is Stephanie. Nice Stephanie. job, Stephanie. Okay, so okay. there's our beautiful... Yeah, and you tell me. He's never had it with lemon. So this is the huge experiment of does he like it with lemon or not? Do the... Um, do I the, don't think we even taste the Do one. the uh, a big announcement. This is the finale here. So. And this, my friends, is the coconut lemon freezer fudge that you can make in five minutes in the kitchen. Or in 55 minutes like us. <laughs> <laughs> and hey. That your kids can eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner because it is so filled with nutrient-dense coconut oil. And that they, the experts say is antiviral, so good for us to oh, be eating right okay. now during this virus time. And Bode's gonna give it a taste. Um, um, stay. Hmm. The recipe is posted in our, in our um, bio, link in the bio, and then you can get all of Molly's recipes at apricotlanefarms.com. Um, where is it on that? I'm sure There's Sandra, maybe recipe. Sandra or Hannah can repost the link again. There's a link that you'll see SM Keats will post here. I don't even taste um, the lemon. In the thread. Oh, you, you don't like even it, taste buddy? the lemon? Yep. Yeah, what do you think? Let's, what do you think? Mmm, good, good. Thumbs up, thumbs down. That is a thumb up. So I want to show you the end of the ribwort plantain. So 
that's it. We've just let it steep now for a while while we were cooking. And oh, then tell I've, them about that. Just so for So those. this is, for anybody who didn't start with us, we just took ribwort plantain. And where did we get it from? From, it's just grows Ribwort. wild very easily. And we got it from the farm. Oh, and the avocado orchard. Oh, the avocado orchard, but it's in all of our orchards right now. And really easy to spot well, once mostly you. mostly in the avocado. Mostly, yes. And so then I just put it in some uh, boiling water to let it steep for 10 minutes or so. And now I'm just pouring it over with a little strainer. I like to do that. It seems so easy. And uh, that's that. So now we have some plantain tea for and our what's respiratory. That? Respiratory. That's yeah, what so I was it's good. Sorry. It's good for respiratory. So with this virus, this is like a virus uh, support snack because we have a nice um, ribwort plantain tea that's good for respiratory. And then we have our antiviral coconut oil snack, which also is good for supporting um, skin challenges whenever you have those essential fatty acids that are in good good uh, quality unrefined fats. So that is that, and then I guess I can just take questions. Yeah, if there's any questions. Do we have, let me see if Sanders pulled any questions up for us. Mm, um, the tea's good, you wanna try it? Let's see, uh, give me one sec while you guys are doing that. Uh, do we have bees? We do have bees, so we have um, like like well well like um or maybe you didn't see this part that we said oh. that that honey that uh, some honey that we used is from the farm. Yes, so the honey that we used in this recipe is from the farm. We do have it hovers at about around fifteen hives. We'll get up around twenty five in the summer but we have somewhere at 12 to 15 that are super stable that last year round. It's crazy because there are so many flowering plants and um, on, on trees on our farm. So you would think that we can support just like tons and tons of bees. But the reality is we're a bit in an oasis where we are that um, some of the other farming is not using pollinators yet. And so we don't have quite enough food for bees to be able to go even outside our farm to get to get food. And what's so, the difference between refined and unrefined? So a refined oil, they're trying to raise the cooking temperature of that oil. So they are going to, in a, in a, um, a process, like a manufacturing process, they're gonna heat that oil up to the <sighs> point that it actually does burn. And then they're going to chemically um, clarify it to make it so that it's not burnt tasting anymore Mom. but that process seems so funny to us for the kitchen because why don't we just learn how to use our unrefined oils and learn the cooking temperatures of them and then we don't have to go through that process and we have uh, oils that haven't been messed with uh, chemically that our bodies m more naturally just know what to do with so that whenever you're finding for um, coconut oil that virgin um, uh, announcement on the label then you know you're getting that kind of first pressing of that oil. And uh, yes, this will be reposted. We'll post it in our stories. Um, I would imagine we'll also post it on Facebook. Um, so yes, the answer to that question is we'll, we'll post this video for you all. And the, the link in the bio is, is how you find the recipe for, the, for today's um, Oh, and I want to tell you guys, while, while we're answering questions, because we're talking about fats, I want to tell you about something I'm very proud of, because we have right now a coconut oil that is from the farm, or not, I'm sorry. And the, hold on, someone oil. just asked, do we still live on the farm? We still live on the farm. <laughs> we live actually in a different spot on the farm, because our partners have built a beautiful place that'll be a nice... Um, uh, foundation for us to be able to share this space so with the public at some point for farm to table dinners. Um, we lived in a little house up on the hill that's now Bodie's schoolhouse, but we've recently moved down here and this kitchen was actually created to be a space where we're able to share this type of beautiful food with you guys. So hopefully you'll be able to see more of um, this kitchen as we, as we go along because it is beautiful and our partners did an amazing job. So, um, this is our personal avocado oil from the farm. Um, we do sell this online and at our farmer's markets. It is an unrefined first cold press of an avocado oil. And the wonderful key about avocado oil is that it is liquid at room temperature because it doesn't have as much saturated fat and you do want saturated fat. So you wanna make sure your animal oils are in your diet. But as a complement to that, 
because it's liquid at room temperature, it's very nice to make a marinade, but it has a super high cooking temperature of 500. So you can make a marinade and then throw this on the grill and um, not worry about burning your oil and you have an unrefined oil. So I didn't know of avocado oils till we started here. We were thinking of what to do with our avocado. Oh, of course I'm in a white, on a white sure. thing. Now, just in full disclosure, we are totally sponsored by this product <laughs> because we made this product. And it was hard to do and it to took, figure out. Yeah, it took us eight years. Look how beautiful that is. So it is super beautiful. Oh, that also looks like an M for m m Molly. It does look like an from M. It's an M. From What's this side. And from I can, that from the side that everybody else is looking at, it looks like. And so you can get, you can buy this. Um, we are selling this online. Yes. And yeah. we'll make so it at a Apricot B, Lane yeah. Farm Store. There, B, sorry. Uh, um, an M that doesn't M look B. like. And you can use this as a salad dressing too. <laughs> you can use this within a salad dressing. Oh yeah, this is a beautiful oh salad dressing oil. Now what's this the, and what's the shelf like life of this oil? Um, the sh I think dragon. I forget what it's like. Two years. It's a dragon. Um, from this one, I think we say once you open it that we want you to use it between four to six months of opening. Um, there's some wiggle room to that, but we are always more cautious. Like. Um, Oh, and it's 450 smoke point, but I think it actually, we're cautious on smoke point too, just so that it doesn't have um, variation in the pressings and it's, we're giving you guys what um, is for sure safe for the label. Um, but yeah, so what was I about? To, oh, and this is great too. If you make a guacamole and you're like, ah, oh, that just does not have enough flavor to it. It's probably an early season avocado that didn't have tons of fat. So you could add a little drizzle of that into it and it's gonna be delicious. And then you can not buy Apricot Lane Farms avocados, but tell everybody you did <laughs> because you're just adding the fat from Apricot Lane Farms avocados. Our, oh, tell me. What? Well, um, uh, uh, I love can I have the other piece? Oh yeah, you can have, see, he said, I love that fudge, can I have the other piece? So that's great. And our avocados are about to come in right now too. They're um, very close to the house being at the farm. No, they Ooh. are. Actually, they're in, yeah, they're they at the, the farmer's market now. Market. And are we gonna try to do the plantain at farmer's markets? We would like to, and that, um, I we just have to get it onto the, the CPC, which is something that you have to register what you're selling so that you always know at the farmer's markets that it's what Oh. They're saying they're selling, but that, so we have to go through that process and the government's obviously a little slower right now. So we may or may not be able to get it on there, but we will get it on soon so that you guys could start. Do we, we will get it on as soon as we can. Do we store the freezer, the fudge in the freezer or in the fridge? Yeah, that's a really interesting, just the fridge. The freezer part of it is I think so that you can put it in there and it chills faster and maybe it just sounds good as a title because <laughs> it could be coconut lemon refrigerator fudge too. Yeah. But it, um, you just keep it in your fridge because then it's not quite so hard whenever you cut it and it's, and it's plenty hard enough. But it does, see it's already softening on Bodhi. So you do want to take this out and eat it right away. It's not a dessert that you'd want to like have on a platter for um, for your guests for a long period of time. It's like out, cut it up, eat it. Maybe a third. Oh, second. can we can we uh, promote the live stream for tomorrow and yes. the subject of what it is? So tomorrow we have Fridays on the farm. That's what started all of this. We decided to roll out a kitchen part because that worked well, and you guys seem to like it. And but, I'm. Thought there's something in the orchard. Oh, Fridays on the farm. Oh, not yet. Uh, but there. So tomorrow is Fridays on the farm, 10 a.m. And the topic is going to be Emma the pig. So John and is, pigs in general. And pigs in general. So John will have you meet Emma, and he'll take you all around and tell us, uh, tell you about our red wattle pigs and some of our crosses um, uh, that we have. Emma is a red wattle pig. She is a red wattle pig. Yes, she is. She's got the waddles, and you'll see them. Does anybody remember how many? Piglets Emma had in the documentary. I think 17. How many? <laughs> I think 17. 17 for the win. And it's very special because John is going to be sharing the children's book that he wrote about Emma tomorrow. We're not going to read it though. I, I mean, we oh. will share. Yeah, we haven't oh, decided sorry. yet. No, that's all right. We talked right. about it. But yeah, uh, just we're weighing it. Show it. <laughs> and and but the other question that's coming up right now is: Are we going to do more cooking shows? I don't know. If you guys like it, I'll do more. And um, so you just tell me. And you can tell me what you want to learn about or um, 
you know, everything I know is just from fiddling with stuff and being um, a bit obsessively interested in this side of food, which led us to honestly farming. And so whatever I've experienced, I'm happy to share with you. So ask, ask me about it and we'll hang out together more. Cool. And then uh, what can we do with extra lemons? I'm not really sure the, how to... Extra lemons. So you can make preserved lemons, which is great. We're actually... I am writing a cookbook, if you can believe it. There's a wonderful team working with me. With all the free this. time. Yeah. And there will be a preserved lemon recipe in there and a couple preserved lemon um, vinaigrettes and things. But you can search online. Preserved lemons are used in all sorts of oh, lamb dishes. And can you can you freeze lemon slices? That's um, avocado. Can you freeze lemon? I don't think so you can. I can think you can. I think there's some. I have never done it. What else you can do is you can dehydrate them and then use them in like making teas and stuff like that. So you like when I made that plantain tea, I could have thrown a piece of dehydrated lemon into it and then it would have steeped with it and gotten the flavor into it. But I myself, I want to say they have frozen lemon, certainly lemon juice. So we have a wonderful lemonade recipe where we use one cup lemon, one cup honey to six cups water. And that's, we serve at all of our different um, farm events and things. And um, that you could juice your lemons Stick that in the freezer. You can even make the concentrate. So you can go ahead and mix up the lemon and the honey, stick that in the freezer, and then you just add your water whenever you bring it out, which is really nice. And so what about, we have some beautiful footage of the orchard. So this this time of year, what it looks like. Should we, should we oh, roll some of that? yes. This is the most beautiful, all, all times of the year in the orchard. Even in the winter when there's no leaves, it's a different kind of beautiful, but it's super magically, um, Beautiful right now with all the flowers. They're all coming in. And then we're looking at um this this is some footage of it's so beautiful this time of year. I know it has this is block M. We we call it the fruit basket. Okay, the fruit basket. There are the sheep out there in the in the fruit basket. I knew it was something with sheep because I heard you hear it? <laughs> Cool. Any final thoughts before we sign off? Any oh, for me? Yeah, oh, for sorry. Me? I thought you meant for oh. the people, right? Oh. <laughs> so, um, I don't think so. We're just here with you guys going through the same thing that, that the whole world is right now. And um, so, we're just trying to find joy um, in the present moment and spending this time with our family and... Um, enjoying nature because we, we like to say that nature is still open and there's so much peace getting out in it right now because it doesn't feel like that threat that we're all uh, living with in the other way. So I guess enjoy your walks. Um, Keep the windows open when you can. Hug the trees. Keep the windows open when you can. Yeah, and fall in love with nature a little bit more. That's where we're finding our peace right now. So... Um, have a wonderful day, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, and we'll see you again maybe next week. Yep, next uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow for Fridays on the Farm, 10 a.m. Um, uh, <laughs> Bye. Good Bye, job. Bye. Good job, Bodie and Molly. Good job.